For a while now, people have requested having the ability to work with Camera Raw inside of Photoshop so that you can apply Camera Raw style adjustments to non-RAW images. Well, you could argue that feature has kind of been available already when working via Bridge, for example, because you could open up JPEG or TIFF images, non-RAW images in other words, and open these up via Camera Raw and do the adjustments to them there. And that would be a non-destructive workflow that you could have. But um, for various reasons which I've outlined in a book, I don't think that approach has always been that successful. And it hasn't been the same as being able to apply those adjustments directly within Photoshop itself. Well, now in Photoshop CC, with the first release, it is now possible to do this. So um, to give you an example of how this can work, um, I've got here the photograph that was used for the cover of the book. And I want to just, just uh, show you, first of all, um, close up the photograph and how it's uh, structured. Uh, we've got all these layers which were, which were used here for doing the retouching. And if I just turn them off, you can see one of the things which I think is quite interesting is that uh, this is the spotting layer. There's nothing really that I had to do to correct or change the uh, makeup or appearance of this model. I think the only thing which I did was just to uh, maybe remove a few loose hairs down here and that was really all. Then there were some adjustment layers that I applied to the photograph and these were done so that I could perhaps include, uh, increase the contrast and the vibrance in the hair. And then finally I added a gradient layer on top to apply the colouring effect that you can see here in the image. And that was it, that was really the only adjustments that I applied working in Photoshop. But there were some other adjustments which I did also where I took advantage of being able to use Camera Raw as a filter and that's what I want to show you here in this particular movie. So to begin with, let's just show you what would happen um, if we worked with just say the background layer. Now I could just go straight up to the filter menu and choose to apply Camera Raw as a filter. That would be a destructive method because I would be applying the filter to the adjustment and baking in the, uh, the, the adjustments that I do. It would just be the same as going to the image menu and choosing adjustments levels. So what I would do uh, always in this instance is go to the layer menu first of all and choose to convert to smart object or you could just go to the filter menu and choose convert for smart filters. So this has now converted the background layer into a smart object layer. And if I now go to the filter menu and choose Camera Raw Filter, this opens up the Camera Raw dialog as a filter within Photoshop so that I can now apply adjustments. But you can see that because I've just selected the background layer only, it hasn't included all the other retouching layers. So I could apply adjustments to this individual layer, maybe to increase the exposure slightly, perhaps raise up the shadows and also adjust the clarity. I could apply those adjustments which would affect just that one element in the picture. And I think that's still something that people are gonna find really useful to do when they're working with this uh, as a filter in Photoshop. Uh, one of the other things I can perhaps point out here is you'll notice that one of the differences is that there are no workflow options when you're working with Camera Raw as a filter. You have most of the controls, but there are just these few differences that you will see. Anyway, I don't want to apply that to the image. Um, so I'm gonna click cancel out of there and then also undo that step where I created the smart object from the background layer. And instead, what I'm gonna do is select all of the layers here. You could use uh, Command Option A on a Mac or Control Alt um, A on a PC to select all of the layers. And then go to the layer menu and choose Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object, and this has converted all of those layers into a single smart object. And if I wanted to show you how they're made up, I can just simply double click on that smart object and that opens it up as a separate image. So that's the smart object contents, exactly the same as what we saw before. So now working with the smart object, if I go to the filter menu and then choose camera raw filter, this opens up the camera or filter, but now you can see all of the layers that are contained within that smart object now available for me to edit. So here I can now apply the adjustments that I want to apply to help improve this picture. So I wanted to mainly reduce, uh, sorry, increase the um, shadows there. Um, I'll take the highlights down a little bit. 
and then just see what happens with the exposure. So just a few sort of small adjustments that I'm going to apply there. And then when I'm happy with the, with the result, then I'll click OK and I can apply those to the image. And having done that, you can see that this has now added a smart filter to the smart object. And then I can just click on the eyeball icon next to the camera or filter to switch off those adjustments. And if I click next to it again, this will then recalculate and apply those adjustments. But it hasn't, uh, it hasn't touched any of the layers which are inside that smart object. So if I wanted to, I can still open up the smart object, like I showed you earlier. And then if, for example, I wanted to perhaps just play around with using different gradient colors, then I could select um, an alternative gradient to apply to the image and then click OK. Close that layer down, close that uh, image down, click Save. And then what we would see now is the revised contents of the smart object updated and then combined with the camera raw filter effect that I applied separately. One of the things that I've done a lot when I've been working with my Photoshop and Lightroom workflow is to start off with an image in Lightroom, do the main editing there, optimize it, open it up into Photoshop, do all the main retouching in Photoshop, and then click Save to close the photograph down. And then if I needed to apply any special effects like a black and white conversion or a cross-processing type of effect, do that using the camera raw controls that are available in Lightroom. Well, now that we have camera raw as a filter available in Photoshop, that means that you can do really everything that I described just working within Photoshop alone. So you could open up the original image in camera raw, optimize it, create a TIFF copy, uh, then start processing, editing that in uh, Photoshop. And then when you're happy, then you could then apply uh, camera raw as a filter to the image and use the special uh, uh, things that you can do in camera raw to apply special effects afterwards, but do so non-destructively. So for example, I'll, example if I um, double click here to open up the camera raw dialog again, I can now fine tune the settings that you see here and let's just say I want to convert this image into black and white. If I click on the convert to grayscale button, I could perhaps play around with the controls here and then go to the split toning section and choose to apply some colors to the image. I can just play around with that. And then if I click OK, this will apply a black and white effect to the image but do so non-destructively because this is only happening using the camera raw filter applied to a smart object, but not to the actual image itself. So I think a real big step forward for using camera raw now, especially since it's been added as a filter in Photoshop, lots of potential creative uses I think you'll find when working with this new filter.